You glance at the shark nervously, but it does not seem to be paying you much attention, fortunately. This underwater realm belongs to the Sharkies. The water drops noticeably in temperature as you progress further into it. There are bound to be sentries on patrol around here, so you remind yourself to be alert. Debris from a wrecked vessel lies strewn and half-buried on the seabed. Seeing no remains of the crew, you wonder if they were eaten before or after they drowned. You need to get closer. You need to... You need... Examining the heavily waterlogged remnants of the vessel, you notice an old antique bottle half-buried in the sand. With great difficulty, you lean over in your saddle and manage to scoop it up. It is a clear bottle with a cork at the end. Inside, you can see a large piece of cloth, which has been meticulously folded up. You remove the cloth from the bottle. Schools of small fish dart around these murky depths. Sinewy seaweed wavers in the ocean tide. You glance at the shark nervously. This underwater realm... Fish swim around, blissfully unaware that they are in danger of being caught and consumed by sharkies. Perhaps they instinctively know when the sharkies are nearby and can avoid them that way. This underwater, this the western wall is but an illusion. You easily pass through it into a series of caves and tunnels on the other side. It's pitch black in here. You cannot see a thing. You'll need to find some sort of light source before you are able to proceed. It's pitch black in here. You This underwater, this dark green weed-like grass seems to have a saccharine content. Some small fish appear to be feeding on the plant. There is no, you need to get, there is nothing, this, there is, there is, you lean over and pick some of the grass which grows in between the rocks. You stuff the sugary grass into the empty bottle and push it all the way to the bottom. You place the baited bottle on the seabed, close to the luminescent fish.
A few of the glowing fish are now swimming around inside the bottle. You take the bottle. A large opaque shell seemingly blocks a tunnel to the north. Whatever lies in that direction must be very important. You slide your blade through a small gap in the door and pull with all your might. It is difficult handling your weapon underwater and you realize that combat will not be an option. So if it ever comes to that, you are in big trouble. As you open the door, ample light floods into the underwater cave, and you are now able to make your way around without the glowing fish. You remount the seahorse. You think it wise to dismount before proceeding any further. Oh no, the seahorse has followed you. Let's hope it doesn't give your presence away. You are safely concealed behind the remnants of a stone archway. This is fortunate as the king of the Sharkies is also here. Aside from his menacing appearance, he also seems to be in a very bad mood. I do not understand it. It should work for me. Is it not written the Trident's power can only be wielded by those of goodwill? Well, is it not? The king's aides nod fervently. And do I not possess the greatest will in this kingdom? No one can best me in battle. My resolve is unshakable. No amount of bleeding can dissuade me from slaughtering my enemies. Does this not signify that my will is the best there is? The Sharky King's aides seem all too willing to agree. Then why does it not work? You watch carefully as the Sharky King taps four shells in order around the arch. It matters not. Tomorrow we invade the Mer People's territory. For without the Trident's power, that old fool Neptune and his weakling followers will fall before our might. Goodwill. Ha! Mine is superior to all. As he leaves, the Sharky King motions for his guards to remain. <laughs> 